From a very young age, you know, I was, I was uh, uh, my father was a builder and my uncle was a builder and they both built, built houses right next door. And so my mother found me, I was about two years old, two and a half, and she couldn't find me and she runs outside and I was up at the very top of the roof on the construction project with absolutely no fear, obviously, of what was going on. And my mother always told that story. We just ad-libbed whatever we could find and it could be a mud house, tree fort. Our imagination was totally free. My parents had a cabin up at Lake Tahoe since I was very young. And I woke up one morning, I was always the early riser, and I come back inside and I go to my parents and I go, well, this is where I'm going to live when I grow up. And so then the, the building part just came out of the skiing part and then I just said, well, hey, this is really what I like to do and I'm good at it. So that's how it all started. I enjoyed being outdoors. So building was the perfect thing for me and still, still is the perfect thing for me. You know, I really needed to chart my own path. So that was something that really gravitated me to just being you know, a builder. When I first became a contractor, I took it to a little bit different level. I was pretty anal about everything, so framing had to be absolutely perfect. So framing was as nice as trim work. As we expanded, that whole core group that stayed with me taught the others, so we don't sub out you know, framing the concrete work or anything. We have our when guys do it, they all can do all the crafts and all the trades. We get guys, especially trim carpenters, and we make them frame so that they also understand the struggles that are going on. And then we take the framers and we make sure that they do a bunch of trim work so they understand the frustrations on the other end. So it's an important part of that whole training process. We're all learning every day. I worked for was a really tough guy. Back in those days, you would see fights on the job, believe it or not. It, it, things were not the way they are now. And you would sit there and go, oh my goodness, <laughs> I don't want that to happen to me. <laughs> it was pretty tough. <laughs> but, you know, my father's job site was quite different. We didn't seem to have those types of issues. <laughs> Other builders would come by the job sites and see they went really darn fast, but extremely precise, almost to a fault. I mean, we were, you know, no one's ever going to see this. Hey, do two bolts, finger tight. We'll have him snug it up a little, and then we'll shim it. But I'm going to need a shim. Center on wall. I probably had 10,000 hours by the time I was 21. When it came to the design build part of it, it, it really kind of evolved. You know, what I added to the process was how do we improve this particular project? Really making it a real home, not just a house. But 
that really makes the home is the absolute quality of craftsmanship. And that craftsmanship starts to exude itself. I mean, it's just the finest little details that lends itself to that whole beauty of, of a real home, not just a house. Every year, it's like we just seem to get better and better. You know, having better facilities, having better tools, having other people that back up the team. It's always rewarding when you get those comments of, this is a piece of art, I, mean, I can't believe the craftsmanship, I can't believe that this all came together. And of course, all projects, at least our projects, take more time. We all have to just take a deep breath and make sure that it comes out perfect. We don't just build for a schedule. We don't just build exactly for a budget. We build to make this thing the best that it can be. It's important that it comes out exactly right. We're part of the team. I'm not there to drive the cost up. I'm there to improve the project. If you want to be really budget-minded, you probably found the wrong person. Budget is not what I do. I do craftsmanship.